Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to talk all about the wonderful technology that is vacuum sealing and how you can use it to preserve your food and your gear. We're also going to be talking about some other items you might not have considered vacuum sealing for long-term storage for emergency preparedness purposes. So let's get to it. All right, so recently I upgraded my vacuum sealer from the original uh, economic food saver. I think they may still sell these at Walmart, probably on Amazon. I'll post links in the description to all this stuff. But I recently stepped it up to a much more advanced user-friendly version. Now something like this goes for about 160 Canadian. Uh, do the math, that's about 120 USD. In my opinion, if you can't afford a Harvest Right freeze dryer, which is the top of the hop, in terms of long-term food preservation, they go between two and three thousand uh, dollars. This is definitely a worthwhile investment that will likely pay itself off if you find yourself throwing out a lot of food. Now, I have it powered by the Kodiak power generator today, uh, just to demonstrate the fact that you know even if the power was out, you could still use this if you had a system like this. This is one of the most advanced portable generators you can get. I've done extensive reviews. There's a 20% off coupon code in the description if you want to pick one of these up. The power that's stored in here is directly from the sun. So I'm going to use that to do some vacuum sealing today. Now there are heavier duty food savers that you can get. Once again, there will be links in the description for those. Figured I'm going to try this out for now, see how well it works so far. It's exceeded my expectations. Now, something like this, an economical version, is going to work just fine. It's going to do pretty much the exact same job as this. The suction, as far as I can tell, is the same. Only this one, there's a lot more trial and error. You're going to make more mistakes with it. And, you know, you're end up probably going to end up wasting more of the bags that they provide you. But this one is just amazingly user-friendly and no food saver did not sponsor this video. The whole idea with the food saver as the name denotes is to store food long term. Now before I get into the offbeat items that you can vacuum seal, there's a few different bags that you can use for this purpose. So the main food saver bags look like this. On one side it's smooth plastic and on the other side it's a more jagged uh, ribbed plastic and this is required in order for you to suck the air out of the package. You can't just put any old Ziploc bag into a food saver. It's not going to work because it has to have these little bumps because that's going to allow the air to channel through and be sucked out. Now, there is a hack that you can use in order to use things like Mylar bags shown here. I've done an extensive video on that showing you how to vacuum seal Mylar bags. Very important because even though these bags are going to keep for a long time, it is plastic. So there is tiny, tiny microscopic pores within there that over time, over the years, are going to release oxygen. And of course, it is plastic. Not many people are too fond of plastic. But this one here, this was an experiment I did. This is actually Mountain House. So I took it out of a Mylar bag and vacuum sealed it just to see. And I believe that this was 2012 that I vacuum sealed this and it's still really rigid and tight. Now, mind you, it's been stored in a cool, dry place. But the idea with Mylar is that Mylar is non-porous. So if you can put a good seal on it, it's going to uh, remain sealed, especially if you use an oxygen, oxygen absorber for many, many years, decades perhaps. So if you're looking at 10 plus year food storage, I would say it's always better to go with Mylar. Go check out that video in the description if you want more information about that. We sell all these Mylar bags at CanadianPreparedness.com. We also sell the oxygen absorbers. We have uh, one quart, one gallon, two gallon, and five gallon bag denominations, and you can get them either ziplocked or unziplocked. Lots of people are intrigued by the Ziploc, but just remember, if you're wanting to vacuum seal them, it's a little bit trickier if it has a Ziploc on it. In most cases, if you're thinking about long-term food storage of staple foods like rice, 
you're not really going to need that zip lock on there so long as after you open it after say 20 years you make sure it's in a bucket something that which can enclose it and it's going to have a shelf life from that point forward like any old rice that you have on the shelf in your house right now so it doesn't need to remain zip locked other bags that we have are these five mil plastic bags these will also vacuum seal with the strip method that i that i'll show you in this video and that i've done extensive uh, demonstration on before these ones are probably the coolest vacuum sealing bags uh, food saver makes these the, the great thing about these is that they are the ziplock version of the food saver you use this little contraption here and it's incredibly easy to use the last one that they had it was not that easy to use like the one you get with this one but i tell you i'm going to be using this a lot just for everyday practical use and that's the great thing about a food saver it's not just for shtf preparing for grid down end of the world as we know it this is something you're going to use every day and it's going to pay itself off and it's going to keep your food nice and fresh now one other really cool thing about the food saver is that you do get these rolls of bags and you can basically make a bag as long as you want it so as you can see you can vacuum seal something that's the width of this but it can be as long as you want it so you can imagine some of the things that you can store especially if you're thinking about making a pvc cache then this is going to add some added protection against moisture now the number one thing of course that you're going to vacuum seal is food you can vacuum seal wet food dry food of course the wet food you're probably going to want to put it in the freezer you can vacuum seal meat you can vacuum seal some vegetables but there are some vegetables which are gaseous such as spinach i believe is one of them uh, kale possibly uh, there's a few more which if you vacuum seal them it's not going to go well with the vacuum sealing process and it's actually going to expand within the package so there are certain things that you can't vacuum seal but 90 percent of food you can of course your dehydrated foods if vacuum sealed they're going to last a lot longer as well and of course if you pair your vacuum sealing with refrigeration or freezing or storing your food in a cold dry place that's going to drastically increase the length of time that it's going to store for now something else that you may not have considered is water you guys have probably seen those emergency drinking water packets basically all you have to do is get a mylar bag fill it with water and what you're going to want to do is crimp it uh, vacuum sealing it you could vacuum seal it if you freeze it first but you know the water is going to expand a little bit so you got to be careful when you're doing that it doesn't really matter if there's a little bit of oxygen in there one of the most important things is going to be that you make sure you put very clean water in here i was going to do a review for a company at one point who claimed that their water uh, would remain free from impurities for more than 50 years and i'm not talking about blue can who believe it or not uh, based on their tests did not fare well uh, over a long-term period of time but putting your water in here if you have something like a berkey water filtration system you filter that water you immediately put it in here you don't touch it you make sure there's no other things that come into contact with it vacuum seal it with a crimper and that's another thing i should add if you are vacuum sealing with mylar the food saver sealer will tend to not get warm enough to seal this material so it's best that if you use uh, something like this like a crimper uh, some people have used irons but this is the the simplest method to do it you just do a couple of those and that sucker is sealed for a long long time these are fairly strong bags so you could throw one of these in a pack fairly confidently and these are five mil bags and there's about three quarters of a centimeter on each side so as long as it's not coming in contact with something that's going to poke it it's going to stay good and of course you're not going to have that plastic leaching into your water and you could make a few of these for your emergency preparedness kits throw a few in there that's going to last for years now when you do open it you may still want to filter it just in case there happen to be some bacteria that got into there when you were pouring it in and it's still alive in there when you go to drink it uh, i know that kind of defeats the purpose uh, chances are it's going to be okay but if you have a water filtration system available then indeed you might as well filter it all right so this one is kind of obsolete since yours truly shared toilet paper tablets with the world 
of course, I am the face of the toilet paper tablet industry now. Never thought that was going to happen. But toilet paper is another thing. The vacuum sealer is going to make, take all of the oxygen out of there. It's amazing. And these are, this is a jumbo roll of toilet paper. So this is like a double roll. So if you were packing those single rolls, it'd be much smaller. So if you did want to, you know, if you were against the toilet paper tablet idea, which I don't know why you would be, it's a great idea. But this is a great way to do it. I just did a little experiment with this one. I have toilet paper tablets that are gonna last me a lifetime, so I don't need this. But yeah, you might not want to, of course, have this much extra on yours. You could get away with a lot less. The same holds true with any kind of cloth. You can vacuum seal baby wipes, you can vacuum seal paper towel. It's just going to act like a compression sack and it's gonna allow you to stuff more stuff in your backpack. Consider that this is one third the size that it was. It's gonna keep it waterproof and uh, it's just a more rigid form to work with. Another thing a lot of people haven't considered and for this, I use the uh, little bags that we sell at canadianpreparedness.com in conjunction with the strip method to preserve some batteries. So, you know, batteries, they come into contact with water. There's risk of corrosion, stuff like that. So this is just one way to help your batteries preserve a bit longer. A lot of these batteries have a 10 year guaranteed lifespan, lithium ion included. So you can pack your lithium batteries like this. I've done a bit of research on this and so far, based on what I've learned, uh, there is no negative effects in doing this. In fact, it's gonna be beneficial because of course it's gonna keep them waterproof. And once again, it's gonna keep them all together nice, firmly tight, and they're gonna be ready for when you need them. All right, so the next thing is a fire starting kit. Obviously, you don't want the fire starting implements that you're gonna to use to get wet. If you're using something like fat rope or the waxwood stick, you don't have to really worry about those things getting wet. But even those things, you might wanna preserve them a little bit longer. So you could vacuum seal them in a kit like this. I'm just gonna do matches right now. So I put my strip in there. So basically you just take a strip of that. You have to sacrifice some of your food saver bag. You just take a little strip like that, one inch wide, about three inches deep. And of course there is the striker in there, which is folded inward on itself. So it doesn't light up in there, which you probably don't have to worry about because there's not gonna be any oxygen in there. So what we're gonna do, see if I can do this from, and now let's see if this works from this awkward angle here. Okay, it didn't work the first time and that's okay. It's not gonna work every time. That's the thing with this method is it might take a couple tries. Once you get in the swing of things and because I'm doing it from such a weird angle here, that's probably why it isn't working. Let's try it again. I know why it's not working. Last time I cut this part off. Now it's gonna work. You want this deep in there so it channels deep so when it starts to fold in on itself, it doesn't suffocate uh, the channel, the air channel. There we go, there we go. It's gonna do its thing and once it's done, it's just gonna automatically release. It's gonna pop right open, just like that. So there we go. You have very tightly sealed, immovable uh, vacuum sealed matches. There is a zip lock here. You're just gonna have to cut it very narrowly close to the zip lock. So this will still function as a zip lock bag. Now, another thing you may want to vacuum seal is ammunition. Now this hunting ammunition can be quite expensive. You can take them out, do it individually, but you may as well just leave it in the box. That way you know exactly what it is, what brand it is, all the rest. You're gonna to wanna to leave about at least that much. You don't wanna go any shorter than that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out, just make sure I cut it straight because that's gonna make it much easier to vacuum seal. Now I wouldn't go overboard in doing this. There's some people who go way overboard, but you know, if you're gonna bury something like this, Definitely, I would do this. 
because moisture, that's why. Once she's done, she's gonna drop. Oh yeah, baby. So if you do have very expensive ammunition like this, it might be worth your while to vacuum seal it. Now, another thing that you can vacuum seal is medication. So this is fish mox, the only real over-the-counter uh, antibiotic that you can get. It's amoxicillin. It's the exact same amoxicillin according to many sources that I've researched. I can't say that with 100% certainty, but most medical experts within the preparedness community concur that this is pretty much the exact same thing you're getting from the doctor or the pharmacist because it all comes from the same laboratory. We are going to put this into a Mylar bag. With these, I'm gonna cut the Ziploc off just to make sure we get a seal. Because sometimes that Ziploc will interfere with the sealing of the Mylar. Now I don't necessarily think that this needs to be entirely vacuum sealed. And sometimes with Mylar, it doesn't vacuum seal as tight. And that's a good thing when it comes to medications because we don't want to squish the pills or anything like that. That's the one problem with this method is that you're going to want to quickly reseal it with your crimper. What that means then is that you might even want to leave it in there and as it's vacuum sealing, crimp it yourself. And that's going to require that you leave an extra length of this, but I think we're going to be okay to just do it this way like we did it the first time. So right when it came off, did it again. Now that sucker's sealed for a long, long time. So medication is something else uh, you might want to consider vacuum sealing for SHTF. So along the lines of medication, another thing you can vacuum seal is a first aid kit. And right in here I have this quick clot, which does have an expiration date. This one is actually past the expiration date. Now I'm not giving you any medical advice with something like this. If you have a situation which warrants the use of this, it's probably pretty bad. So obviously this is something that's worth switching out, but I don't think you necessarily need to throw it away because there's been many people who've done tests on this stuff after five, even 10 years, as long as it's airtight and sealed, because it's a hydroscopic material, meaning that it's going to take water out of the air or uh, out of you know the blood, which is what allows it to clot, that is what's gonna actually make it ineffective. And as you can see, this is still has a tight vacuum seal. This looks like it's some kind of metal, possibly a mylar bag as well. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double down on that seal and put it in here with the rest of this little first aid kit. And of course, we're gonna have a watertight first aid kit, which is gonna be vacuum sealed. And everything within the first aid kit is going to preserve longer. Now the only problem with this system is if you're using this for backpacking, you're going to want to insert this into another pack in case you did have to crack this open right away, then at least you'd had a way to uh, carry those items in an enclosed uh, package afterwards. Now the next thing is something I was thinking about and it's Sharpie markers. I'm going to be doing a video soon that's going to make you probably want to go out and buy several Sharpie markers because these things are going to be invaluable when crap hits the fan for a variety of reasons. Now I would actually encourage you if you could to get the Sharpie Magnum marker because that's going to allow you to paint signs and stuff like that which are going to be much bigger. Obviously you can use spray paint, uh, you can use normal house paint for that purpose as well. Uh, but something portable, a portable writing instrument, uh, believe it or not, they might be in short supply. Ink does dry out over time, it does take a long time, but something like this 
is worth considering. So consider that in a grid down situation without computers, uh, all your record keeping is gonna have to be done by the pen and paper. So that's one reason why you should strongly consider uh, vacuum sealing some of your markers or pens. Now another thing you can vacuum seal are spices. And of course, not only for edible purposes, but also for barter purposes. Along the same lines of food preservation, another thing you can vacuum seal is you can basically make your own rations. Now I haven't done this yet, but I'm gonna be doing it in a future video. I've made rations out of these types of vacuum seal bags before for trips that I've went on in the past. And that's pretty simple. You just take a variety of different things, put them in their own individual packages, slip them in there, vacuum seal it shut. But what I would like to try to do is do it with a Mylar bag and make something which might rival an actual military grade MRE. Now the material that the military uses for their MRE packaging is a little bit heavier duty. It's a heavier duty plastic material which can basically be dropped from an airplane. Uh, a lot of this Mylar is very tough stuff so it probably would be able to compete with that but that's something we're gonna try in the future for sure. Now, another thing you can do, which doesn't actually require a vacuum sealer, is make a Faraday bag with your Mylar bags. And that's pretty easy to do. So basically, you're gonna have your electronics and you're gonna put this, uh, wrap this in paper, wrap it in a plastic bag or something to that effect, something that's non-conductive. So if there was something like an electromagnetic pulse, the energy is gonna go around this metal enclosure and it's not gonna be able to couple into this and fry the circuitry of that because it's gonna have that non-conductive liner within it. So very simple thing to do. Now another thing you can vacuum seal and I'm gonna to try to do it today is you can vacuum seal a firearm. It's a great way to store a firearm long-term, prevent against corrosion. You know, even the slightest bit of humidity in a place over the years may well lead to some level of rusting, especially if you have a firearm that you're not using uh, that often. The other thing you can vacuum seal that's gonna be along the lines of emergency preparedness is gonna be seeds. Vacuum sealing plus refrigerating or freezing your seeds or keeping them at a cold, dark place is gonna allow them to preserve a lot longer for many growing seasons after those uh, seeds were harvested. Other things that you can vacuum seal are toiletries, which may also have an expiration date, things like toothpaste. Uh, that's gonna be an excellent thing in a crap hits the fan scenario when you don't have any more dental care available. You're definitely gonna wanna take care of your, your teeth and other uh, hygiene products are gonna come in very handy and also be great for barter as well. Other things you might wanna vacuum seal, but you might also wanna consider getting a laminator for this purpose and those are pretty cheap also, is uh, your documents, photocopies of your identification, any uh, important documents related to uh, the possession of property that you own, and anything that you think you might need to prove that what you have is yours. You could use this for photographs, educational materials, maps, any document which might come in handy in a craft hits a fan scenario, you can vacuum seal or you could laminate. Lamination would be good if you wanted to make something for quick reference, even if you wanted a family photograph in your bug out kit, laminate it. Um, but the thing with vacuum sealing, of course, is that it's gonna be thicker. You're gonna be able to put a lot more documents into one bag. It's gonna be watertight and you're not gonna to have to worry about those things getting damaged. Other things you can vacuum seal, and I do this with my own bug out bags, is your socks and your underwear, t-shirts. Anything like that, it's really going to allow you to compress that stuff down a lot. Now, obviously, you're going to be adding the weight of these little bags, but these things don't weigh much. Maybe part of a few grams per bag. So you're not going to be adding much weight, but what you're going to be doing is saving a lot of space. And it's going to keep those things separate. It's going to keep them dry. To keep all your clothing, cloths, underwear, socks, all that stuff nice and dry, separated, organized, and tightly compact inside your bug out bag or heaven forbid, your inch bag. So I hope this video gave you a few ideas today on things that you can vacuum seal. What I'd like to know from you, is there anything that I haven't talked about today that you think would be worthwhile vacuum sealing for a crap hits the fan or just even a short term 
disaster scenario or just for practical purposes for hiking, uh, going camping, things of that nature. Once again, if you want any of these products, I'll post links in the description. We have 20% off the Kodiak power generator, um, the food saver, I'll post the link in the description. You can get all the Mylar bags and the oxygen absorbers from CanadianPreparedness.com. We got excellent prices on those. So go check it out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.